Hello everyone, Jesse here from the Subi Sanctuary. Make sure you like and subscribe. Here we have our 2005 Forester XT Limited. So it has the leather interior and a manual transmission, which is a pretty rare combo in these, along with not being silver like they all seem to be. We've had this car about nine years. It's been off the road for the past five years with a slightly blown motor. It had a chronic misfire which turned out to be low compression in one cylinder due to a, a bad or burnt exhaust valve. I'm going to go through the car, kind of bring it back to life. First thing I'm going to do is replace the stock suspension with some nice fresh WRX wagon suspension. I am going to use the 3 8 rear um, top hat strut spacers to kind of compensate for the uh, the potential sag you get when putting the Impreza suspension on a Forester. Even though this is wagon suspension, I still just want to be able to, uh, you know, carry cargo back there and not get the droop or the uneven ride height. So this is the motor going back in. It was built mostly out of spare parts I had laying around. A cylinder head from here and a, a short block from there. I did uh, some slight reliability mods like TGV deletes, the silicone uh, turbo inlet, and a couple other little uh, trick mods here and there.
Alright, so the Forester is getting pretty close to complete. My next step here after getting the new stuff on, as you can see, the original paint is super whack. I don't think I've ever clay barred this car or waxed it in the time that I've had it. Along the roof, once upon a time, the sunroof used to leak. We have fixed that. This is old tape residue. It's been on here like five years or more. So you can imagine how stuck on this is. I tried Goo Gone, it did nothing. So I've ordered the uh, 3M eraser wheel. I'm gonna try that. I'll show you guys how it goes. So otherwise, 
I'm going to proceed with a, uh, a clay bar on the car because I figure that's step one before we get into any uh, polishing or waxing. The paint doesn't feel horrible, but it sure looks horrible. There we have one side done. It wasn't as bad as I expected as far as debris on it, but like the paint itself is very, very scratched. So we'll see how well a, a, a polish brings this back. I'm gonna resume and do this along the entire car. I think uh, tomorrow I'll get into cleaning the roof residue off before I go any further with the paint, just because I don't want to shoot 3M wheel all over the car after I've gone further than this. So, I mean, I still got to do the hood. The hood is definitely quite the action. I don't know if I'll even be able to get those scratches out. But right now, making the car look good, this is kind of stage one of the car. We'll be able to, you know, drive it again. It will look quite presentable. And in a few years, when I have time, I'm probably going to go over the whole body. I do have JDM front fenders I wanted to put on. At that time, I'll end up repainting the whole car, and that will kind of uh, immortalize it and uh, be added to the collection. Here we are just working away on the residue. So we're using the 3M adhesive remover wheel. Uh, it does a pretty good job. This saved me a lot of time. As you can see over there, it's all off. It does leave a little bit of a residue, a little bit of a haze, but this comes off really easy, uh, even with like a quick wipe of Goo Gone or even, you know, WD-40. So this definitely was uh, worth the money and has made this a much faster process. So I'm gonna carry on here with the rest of the tape residue and back to my clay bar. All right, we're back. I've got the whole car clay barred now. You can kind of see what I'm working with in this paint. It is super bad. Like it really could use a repaint, which is the plan. Alright, I felt the hood was so bad that it needed a bit of a wet stand. So this is only a 5,000 grit, but it will take out some of the uh, the stains, maybe some really small scratches. So I've just done the hood, the top of the fenders, because I mean this car sat in a barn for five years without a cover on it. And then I did the top of the roof. The rest of the roof is probably pretty bad, but I'm gonna go over it with a compound polish now, so hopefully that does the trick. Well, here we are guys, after the uh, the polish. This was just a, a compound polish, but whatever this is, it is etched deep into the paint. Uh, it is not gonna come out. I, I don't really wanna keep wet sanding it because you can almost see there's like yeah, it's freaking in there. So I'm going to go over the car with a finishing polish, uh, wax it up. And like I said, uh, my plan is just to repaint the whole car anyway. This is kind of just for the, the time being. Uh, maybe outside in the sun, it might look a little better. The sides, um, not too bad at all because obviously, you know, sitting upright like this, things can't fall from the air to the side of the car. So you can see at the top of the doors, it does have the same marks and then, you know, they fade away to nothing under that.
so how this all started was this was actually one of my like must-have cars so I had searched for one for a couple years before I found this one I wanted it to be any color but silver or gold or red um, preferably black so when this one came up obviously I jumped on it I got it I was super thrilled about it I brought it home I didn't totally need to like put it on the road right away so one day at the time my wife was driving the same Forester but a non-turbo model she borrowed this to go to work by the time she got home from work with this she decided she didn't want to give it back so we kind of just let it become hers um, really special car to the both of us we had started our family in this car yeah, this was something really cool. Uh, this was a feature in Subaru's Six Star magazine. So that's us with the car, and that's our little tiny son when he was just born. When I went into labor, it was a really bad thunderstorm, mm -hmm. and Jesse had to rush us to the hospital, and then this was Walter's first car that he got to come home in, and our kids will probably always only drive Subaru. Yeah, yeah, they're totally addicted to the uh, the Subaru Rumble. It really puts babies to sleep well. It does. We've done so many car ride naps. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, this sentimental restoration here. And uh, now my wife can enjoy the car again, uh, and we can put the kids' seats back in it, and they can go tour around and um, you know race some dudes and stuff. That should be.